<laughs> Hello, my internet friends. Bulls and ghouls everywhere from beyond the land and the grave. My name is KDOB10, and welcome to this week's commentary for Dancing with the Stars Season 21. This week was the spellbinding Halloween week. As said on social media, Halloween is my Christmas. And I love Halloween week for Dancing with the Stars. We had a few bone-chilling performances, a couple of duds, and one elimination that is really, really pissing off every person who is in that fandom. We will get to that elimination in just a few moments. But first, let us talk about Nick Carter's Argentine Tango. The song Bring Me to Life by Evanescence. It is one of my favorite songs of all time. But does it really fit an Argentine Tango? Absolutely not. Why would you think that? It only fits for one dance. And that is Pasa Doble. I will also note that when you first play it the first time, it's pretty good. When you do it a second time for a routine, it is pretty good. But when you play it over and over, it staggers and it gets a little boring after a while. So, for me, I was not impressed. And I'm sorry, I can't do my creepy voice anymore. <laughs> okay, um, Nick did stagger a few times. And, you know, it wasn't really one of my favorite Nick Carter performances. But I will say it was better than last week. I'll give him that, at least. Now, to Hayes. Hayes did a waltz to Lana Del Rey's Once Upon a Dream. Okay, I have never heard of this version before, but I love Lana Del Rey. She is a goddess. Anywho, let's focus on the dance. Focus, focus on the dance, Katie. Okay, the dance. The lines were smooth. They were elegant. And it was very pretty. I actually like this. But I don't think this was a good concept of making Hayes a werewolf. He kind of looked like a 12-year-old auditioning for... Uh, President Lincoln in the school play. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, it wasn't, like, mind-blowing for me, but I still enjoyed it. Well done. You know, when Mark comes up with a crazy costume idea, it either works or it's blown up in his face. Last year's Pasta Doble with Sadie Robertson blew up in his face. In my opinion, there was too much production. But with this Paso Doble with Alexa Penavega, this worked. I love the concept with Edward Scissorhands. This was pretty good. I was impressed. I was amazed. She worked off Mark well. It just looked like a great partnership. Like, they just worked off each other and... I don't know. It, it, it was perfect. Not 100% perfect, but... 95% perfect. And while there were members of the troop in there, I felt like it did not take away Alexa being the main focus in this dance. And that's what I appreciate the most. And to be quite frank... This is probably one of my favorite Mark Ballas routines to date. You know, I just don't like Tamar and her piss-poor attitude sometimes. I don't care if the producers manipulated her video package. I don't care if it was an actual version of what she said. But you should not say that you are, quote, one of the best or the best. Okay, if you are the best, then explain why Bendy has been on top of the leaderboard five times. Okay, you are not the best. You are probably one of the best to some people, but you are not the best. You know, with that kind of statement, 
I think that kind of sealed her fate just a bit. Maybe she'll go home next week because of that statement or the next week. But either way, I think this kind of sealed her fate, whether the producers manipulated it or not. But anywho, let us focus on her dance. Well, the song was pretty nice. I like it. But I don't think there was enough Foxtrot material. It just kind of looked like... Mm, it looked like jazz. There's not much to say about this. I just wish she could just let loose and be confident. Like, she is confident, I can assure you that. But I want her to be both confident and have fun while letting loose. Okay, when I saw Andy Grammer's pasta dough play last night, I about broke my glass. <laughs> I assure you, I did not drink last night. I had a glass of, um, what is it? Vanilla Coke. We didn't have cold vanilla Coke cans, so I just put some in a glass and ice cubes. Anyway, I about broke my glass of my vanilla Coke seeing this. Did not expect this at all. He came out like he was in control. <laughs> I don't know what to say! Because last week he's all like, Hey, I'm trying to be Gene Kelly. Good morning. Good morning. And then this week he comes out with, The beautiful people! The beautiful people! And I'm just like, No way! One of my favorite songs also. <laughs> oh, wow. Andy really surprised me. <laughs> okay. Another favorite routine from Andy Grammer. It's not perfect, but it was really, really interesting to watch. And I've already watched this about five times. Bendy? 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 What? What is going on? Andy and Bendy... Wow, I don't... How can I grasp this situation? You see, sweet little Bindi Irwin being all laughing and adorable and not being able to scare her mom or her brother or anyone of the castmates. But then she comes out like... <laughs> what just happened? What? <laughs> okay. Uh, where's my notes? <laughs> oh, okay. She had so much passion. There was a... Bleh, <laughs> sorry. There were a lot of... Bleh, I can't talk! <laughs> she was fierce. She was edgy. Tons of sharp lines for me. She pulled it off so well. Ah, I'm screwing up my words even more. I don't care. This was spellbinding. I don't know what to say anymore. This was magical. Week one, Alex Scarlatos is definitely back to some extent. However, I kind of find him a little douchebaggery in this week's video package. I don't know if the producers manipulated it or what like they supposedly did with Tamar. But I did not feel that vibe. The vibe that I'm like, oh, I'm in love with him. I found him kind of like an asshole. Uh, I don't know. Um, he worked with Artem this week, which I love Artem. Anyone can tell you I love Artem. But I don't know if working with Artem was the best idea. There are a lot of other people that he could have worked with. I don't know why Carrie Ann thought of Artem's name. Uh... Regardless, I love Artem either way. Um, but I really can't tell you how I honestly feel about this dance. It was nice, but a tad bit boring. And I really couldn't see his footwork due to the smoke. Yeah, there were too much smoke effects with this week's show. But can I give Lindsay Arnold credit for coming out of nowhere on a hoverboard? Pure genius, my dear. Carlos, your lines were puzzling for me. I could have done without the cape. 
But I can appreciate the fact that Whitney did not half-ass this pasta doble like she did with Nick Carter. <laughs> the costumes kind of threw me off with this music, because I was expecting Phantom of the Opera, but what I got was Carmina. You know, if you were going to do that number, then your costume should have fit the song. Just saying. But overall, I really thought Carlos did well. Kudos. Kudos. And now let's move on to the team dances. On Team Nightmare, we had Nick and Sharna, Hayes and Emma, Andy and Allison, and Tamar and Val. And they have chosen Nightmare Before Christmases. This is Halloween. I love this movie. I love the song. I was hoping they would not piss me off with this. I thought this was a creative concept. They all look like they were enjoying themselves. Well, I don't know about Tamar. She kind of looked off to me. While I'm on the subject with Tamar, he Val kind of used some old choreography for her. It did seem like she enjoyed herself with her solo part and then as a group. And honestly, it got really boring. Um, hold on, let's see here. Um, I felt like Andy's was kind of short and I really didn't get to enjoy it. Uh, it's a little disappointing. Um, Nick, it was both clever and a cliche. I don't know how to interpret this. It just looked like something I've already seen before, and I wanted to see something more different. But out of everybody, I would have to say that Hayes was the weakest one in that group. He came out, and he was just... T-Rex in his arms, being all wibbly-wobbly, like, Hey, I'm fun. I'm being adorable. Ha <laughs> ha And you're supposed to be scary. Uh, they got a perfect score. Kind of iffy on it, but overall, I enjoyed this number from Team Nightmare. For Team Who You Gonna Call, we had Bindi and Derek, Carlos and Whitney, Alexa and Mark, and Alec and Lindsay. Bindi... Use the strategy of keeping the Penavegas together, which is kind of nice. And she picked Alec because her mom is from Oregon, which kudos to you for representing your mom's home state, Bendy. I appreciate that. Um, okay. There was great synchronization, which is always predictable with Derek's team dances. Um... Bindi had a little bit of misplacement in the beginning, and I kind of saw that when I replayed the footage. So, I'm not knocking you down, girl. But, yeah. I still enjoyed her, though. Um, Bindi's solo part was simple, but I still enjoyed it. Uh, let's see. Carlos. The hoverboard concept was awesome. I don't know how he managed to stay on the hoverboard and hold on to Whitney without dropping her. That takes guts, and I salute him for that. Alexa, sassy, as always. I love sassy Alexa. But I kind of felt like this was weak on her part. And there wasn't really much on Alex's part. Um, he just, like, kind of lifted up Lindsay and everything, and it just seemed like that's all he did. Kind of weak on his part, too. Y yeah. The end with Alexa, though, being flipped around? Spellbinding brilliant. I thought that was pretty epic, if you asked me. Um, they got... Okay. Ten plus nine is nineteen. Uh, yeah, twenty-eight. I can't do math. They got a 28, which means that Derek's team actually lost, but that's fine. You know, it doesn't matter if you beat Derek's team for once. You gotta at least be on the same level as him. You know what I mean? This man has won a lot of team dances. He's won five times, two Emmys, <laughs> a book, two sold-out tours. He has a movie, people. What all has the other pros done? 
Yeah. That's all I can say about that. The couples that were in Jeopardy were Hayes and Emma, Tamar and Val, and surprisingly, Alexa and Mark again, which I don't understand that. But the couple that went home was... <laughs> Hayes Greer and Emma Slater. Okay. I just want to go on about this for a moment. So bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to get a little bit ugly. This goes out to everyone that was part of Team Slays. I don't care if you are being piss poor about him being eliminated. If you are going to use all that energy of being pissed off that he got voted off, or when he was still in the competition, if you are using all of your energy to trend him on Twitter, on Facebook, whatever type of social media, you should have put all that energy and fucking phone calls and everything just to keep him in this competition. Trending on social media does not save your fucking ass. I have said this numerous times. My friend Gabe Goodman09 has said this numerous times. Phone votes matter, people. And I don't care about Hayes being voted off. This is probably one of the better times of my life right now with this show. And you know what? If you are one of those people that are like, Oh, Hayes got voted off, I'm never watching this show again. Then you need to get the fuck out of here. Because you're only here to support and watch Hayes on a dancing competition. We don't need people like you that only watch one time and then you're gone after the season's over or your person got voted off. We don't need people like that. For God's sake. I have been watching this show for ten years and I have seen people that I didn't like. But did I still watch the show? Hell yes! There were people that I actually loved on the show. People from my childhood, or people from my teenage years, or people from my recent adulthood. I can't stress this enough. Phone votes matter! No trending on Facebook! No trending on Twitter! You know, it didn't really help Hayes either that he was encouraging people to trend him, make him the number one trending topic on every point of social media. He was too far up in the asshole of social media to give a fuck about phone votes. Oh my god. I am done. I'm done. Goodbye, Hayes. Goodbye, Team Slays. Peace out. Next week, we have the dance-offs. I hate dance-offs. Everyone that knows me knows I hate dance-offs. I don't know what is the point of it. But... Aaron will be back. Leah Remini was only here because Aaron was doing World Series for the past two weeks. Can we just get rid of Aaron and just replace her with Leah? I enjoy Leah Remini the past two weeks, and I have done with Aaron since season 18. Uh, yeah, just being biased. Leave a comment down below of who you guys enjoyed or did not enjoy in the Spooktacular special. And... You know what? I'm just going to cut it short this time. I'll see you guys next week. Take care.